Uh, my name is Jeremy Williams. I'm a senior transportation planner with the City of Fort Worth's Transportation and Public Works Department. I'll be serving as your moderator this evening for the presentation and the discussion period. Um, we'd ask everyone to mute yourselves to avoid that pesky echo and disturbance during the meeting. Um, for questions or comments that you have for the presentation, we'll be addressing those afterwards. And if you could use the chat box, we'll be able to read those out um, to ISCAL um, for response. And we'd also like to recognize the attendance of Councilmember Kelly Allen Gray this evening for the meeting. We really appreciate uh, you being here. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Iskal for the presentation on this uh, very important project. And Iskal, you'll need to unmute yourself there. Hello, everyone. Thank you all for being here. I'm gonna make it really quick. Yeah, we'll do. We'll try to. Yeah, thanks, uh, Jeremy. Um, this WebEx is for East Fourth Street and East First uh, Street uh, striping and trail trail uh, improvement um, community engagement meeting. Uh, CD project number one zero two six zero one and. Uh, um, uh, I'm, uh, my name is again Iskal Sresta. I'm the city project manager for this project. Um, and Kimley Horn and Associates uh, is a design consultant for, the, uh, for this project. Today, today is December 10, uh, 2020. It's about 6.05 p.m. The agenda for today's meeting is I'm going to briefly describe about the project background. I'm going to um, explain what the purpose and goal of the pr uh, project. I'll also give you an update about um, project and its funding. I'll also explain about the uh, project schedule. And at the end, we will take any question that you may have. Um, and uh, at the end of the presentation, I will provide my contact information. Uh, if you need to contact me, if, uh, if you have any questions or, or, or any suggestions regarding the project. Before I go over the meeting agenda, I, will, I want you to introduce um, uh, the project team um, um, to you all. Um, uh, again, I want to introduce myself one more time. Uh, my name is um, Iskal Tresta. I'm the city project manager for this project. I will be responsible for day-to-day -day operation of this project. Uh, today, we have um, uh, Julia Ryan. Uh, she is um, a TPW Complete District Program Manager. Uh, we also have Jeremy Williams. He's a TPW senior planner. And um, we also have Nolan Pierce. He's a design uh, engineer for this project from Kimley Horn. And uh, we have Jeff Whittaker. He's a traffic slash planning engineer from uh, Kimley Horn. And uh, we have Jeremy, uh, uh, I'm sorry, J Jeffrey Allen. He's a, T a TPW communication specialist. I want to move along with the with the uh, meeting agenda. Um, again, the corridor of the project is on East Fourth Street and, and East First Street. Uh, the limit of, of the project is in between I-35 at uh, West to Lake Habasu Trail on on East, and the project corridor is located um, uh, in Council District Number Four and, and Council District Number Eight. The demarcation between the council district is Beach Street. Uh, east of the Beach Street is, is on council district number four, and the west of the Beach Street is on council district number eight. The goal uh, of this project is to provide a safe and comfortable, comfortable user experience for all travelers along the project corridor, whether by foot, bicycle, or vehicle. And another goal is connectivity, to connect the existing bike lane which terminates at the Sylvania Avenue to the existing trail system provided by the Gateway Park. This project has two different phases. Um, the phase one is the off street share use path. Um, the limit of the phase one is the, from Halton, uh, Halton Road to the Lake Havasu Trail. Um, and uh, overall, um, it's a little over half a mile long. Uh, both uh, design and construction is funded by the city. The phase one is funded by the city. And the con uh, anticipated construction start for the phase one is fiscal year 2022. Um, at this point, the design is 60% complete and, and consultant has uh, 
recently submitted 60% plan for, for, for series review. Phase two is an on-street bike lane. The limit of the phase two is between I-35 and Haltom Road. Um, it's about approximately two mile long. Um, design is funded by the city. However, the construction is funded by the federal grant. Uh, anticipated construct construction start for the phase two is fiscal year 2024. Again, uh, the design is 60% uh, complete and consultant has submitted 60% plan for the, six, uh, for the city's review. I want to give you the brief overview of the phase one. Again, um, as you can see on, on, on your screen, the limit of the phase, the, the entire phase one is on council district number four. Uh, the limit of the project is between um, Haltom Road and Lake Havasu, but the most of the work is going to be done uh, between Haltom Road and a Gateway Park, which connects to the existing trail system and a small um, sidewalk between the Oakland Boulevard and Lake Havasu Trail. Um, the trail is about 10 foot wide and it has two, uh, two to three foot shoulder. There's two different scenarios on, on, on phase one. Uh, uh, it's one trail being in the very close vicinity to the roadway and another one is being away from the roadway. If you see on your screen, the, the, the typical section that's shown on the left is for the sec segment that's gonna be in the close vicinity of the roadway. And one on the right is for the section that's gonna be away from the roadway. In both scenarios, the trail is gonna be 10 foot wide with two to three foot shoulder. If you are wondering what they're gonna look like, um, these fixes are here only for example, they, that's how, this is how they're gonna look like after it gets constructed. The picture in the left is taken at the Eden Road Park at Arlington, and the picture on the right is taken at Southwest Boulevard at Fort Worth, Texas. Now I wanna to go to the phase two, um, uh, phase two of the project. Um, I wanna explain the existing condition um, the roadway section, uh, there's two roadway sections um, um, for the phase two. Uh, the, uh, if you look at the red one, that's the red one indicates the section between um, I-35 and, and, and Sylvania Avenue. It's a three lane, a three lane roadway with the one, one lane in each, one lane each, one lane each direction with the share lane on the middle with the dedicated bike lane. Um, we are not proposing any, any changes on the lane configuration on, 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 uh, on this red seg segment. However, the blue one is between Sylvania Avenue and the, and the Haltom Road. The existing roadway is a four lane, undivided, two lane each, each way um, uh, section that's existing. What we are proposing is two lane, one lane each way, undivided with the dedicated bike lane. I also want to talk about the police data uh, as an uh, existing um, uh, uh, condition. Uh, the police data was collected be uh, between October 2017 and March 2018. The posted speed limit of the corridor of the project is about 35 to 40 miles per hour. There were about 14,900 vehicles uh, were counted. Um, and average speed over the speed limit was 19 miles per hour. That being said, people were, the people who were speeding were driving at around 59 miles per hour on average. However, the average speed for the entire 14,900 vehicle was 45 miles per hour, which is well above the posted speed, um, uh, speed limit. Uh, that being said, it looks, the existing condition are, is the people are driving at a higher speed than the posted speed limit. And in the last past five years, there is one uh, um, bicyclist fatality, two injuries, and one possible injuries. This picture is taken at East 40th Street, looking east, um, uh, east of I-35. Um, as you can see, the pavement marking cannot be easily seen, but it is a three-lane roadway uh, with one lane, uh, two, one lane each way 
with the shear lane in the middle with the dedicated bike lane. There is no clear demarcation of between the travel lane and a bike lane. What our proposed our project team is proposing is this. Um, we are not changing any lane configuration uh, between uh, I-35 and, 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 and Sylvania, Sylvania Avenue. Sylvania Avenue. Uh, uh, hello? Can you hear all me? Can you hear me? Uh, uh, the, what we are proposing is it's still going to be three lane, one lane each way with the shear lane in the middle and, and the uh, dedicated bike lane on the outside. All we are doing is a restriping uh, and putting some signage as, as part of this project between uh, I-35 and, and Sylvania. Now for the sex, sex, section between Sylvania Avenue and Halton, there is two different scenarios. Uh, the, the scenario one, and this is for the yellow segment highlighted in the in 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 the in the screen uh, between Bur it's on Fourth Street between Burline Street and and, and Central Drive. Uh, the existing is four lane undivided, two lane each way. Our project team is proposing it to be two lane, one lane each way, undivided with the parallel uh, with the parallel parking on the outside lane, with the de and dedicated uh, bike lane between federal parking and, and, and a travel lane. As you can see, this picture is taken at 4th Street, um, somewhere between uh, Burline Street and Chandler Drive. Uh, and this picture is looking at east. Uh, it's four lane, uh, two lane each way on divided street. Um, and, and you can see the people are parking their car on outside outside lane. Um, even though it's a, it's a four lane, two lane um, each way, it's, it's not working as, as it's intended for. Therefore, our project team is proposing um, this. Um, it's going to be two lane undivided, one lane each way with the parallel parking on outside lane and, and a dedicated bike lane between the parallel parking and, 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 and a travel lane. The blue on the image, the light blue um, indicates as, as a parallel parking, red as a, as a, as a uh, bicycle lane. Again, there's another uh, scenario, and this scenario is typically um, true for the blue, blue segment shown on the, um, uh, on the screen. Um, it's between Sylvania Avenue and Haltom Road, except for the section between uh, Burline Street and, and Tendal Drive. Uh, existing is, again, it's a four lane, uh, two lane each way, uh, undivided uh, street. Uh, our project team is proposing it to be two lane, um, undivided one lane each way, with a dedicated bike lane at the outside lane with the four foot of buffer. This will be much safer and comfortable for bicyclists. As you can see, this picture is taken um, um, in on Fourth Street. Um, this picture is looking at east. It's, this picture is at just west of uh, railway track bridge. Um, it's a four lane, undivided, two lane each way street. What our project team is proposing is this: it's, after, um, it's going to be two lane, undivided, one lane each way with the dedicated bike lane at the outside lane with um, a four foot of buffer. Again, this will be much safer and comfortable for bicyclists uh, to um, ride through the corridor of the project. Um, again, you can also see on the screen that the, the, the sidewalk uh, in at the approach of the bridge. Um, if there is a pedestrian that are walking along the corridor of project and, and there is no sidewalk available, people can Pedestrian can use the bicycle as a, as a sidewalk lane, wherever the sidewalk is not available. There are three signalized intersections uh, uh, on this uh, project. Uh, one at Sylvania Avenue, another is at Riverside Drive and, and a Beach, Beach Street. Um, our project team is proposing the protected intersection uh, for uh, safe and comfortable crossing for both pedestrian and bicycle, uh, bicyclist. Um, and this protected intersection, this will be the first in the region. 
Um, and one of the reasons that we were able to secure the federal fund is because we are um, implementing uh, protected uh, intersection as part of this project. We are also proposing the facility transition. Um, as, as I mentioned earlier, the phase one is a off street and, and a phase two is on street. The facility transition is going to work as a safe for, for pedestrian bicycle to cross these streets safely. Um, we are implementing um, uh, innovative element as part of this project. Um, uh, we will be ins installing some sensor uh, to count uh, the bicyclists, uh, on-street bicyclists. And we, we, as part of the project, we are proposing a protected intersection with the bike signal as part of the project. And um, uh, again, the facility transition for, for safely across the, for the both pedestrian and bicyclists to cross the street. And we are, are also installing um, sensor uh, on the trail to count both bicyclists and pedestrian. And um, we are rep repurposing existing infrastructure to reduce the cost of the project. Uh, you, may be, uh, you may be wondering what happens when we reduce the number of lanes from um, um, uh, four lane undivided two lane each way to the two lane, um, uh, one lane each way with the dedicated bike lane. Um, we did ask um, our consultant, Kim Lee Horn, uh, to perform the traffic analysis. And, and, and traffic analysis was performed, um, focused on right sizing of the street and also uh, the uh, intersection uh, traffic operation analysis. And what they concluded was um, the level of service is roughly the same um, by even by reducing, uh, re reducing the number of the lane. Um, as you can see on the image today, meaning it's a four lane, uh, two lane each way, undivided street. Um, it's occupied 27% of the time by the car, 1% by truck, and 72% is not being used at all. Now future meaning a two lane, one lane each way with the dedicated bike lane. Um, uh, and, and on that future, uh, the, the car is gonna occupy 53% of the time is occupied by the car, 1% by truck, and 47% and is still not gonna be used. That being said, um, even we are reducing uh, the number of lanes, the level of service is roughly the same as they are now. Uh, before uh, we go, um, we take any question, I wanna circle back uh, to the purpose and goal of this project in case someone joined in the middle of the presentation and, and, and didn't have a chance to listen to the early part of the presentation. Um, the goal, again, the goal of the project is to provide safe and comfortable user experience for all traveler along the project, on the corridor, project corridor, whether by foot, whether by foot bicycle, by or vehicle. And another goal is connectivity, basically to connect existing bike lane, which terminates at the Sylvania Avenue, to the existing trail system provide, provided by the Gateway Park, which is up almost two miles east of it. Uh, that being said, I, uh, our team is ready to take any question you may have. Thanks, Iskal. So we have a question within the chat box from someone labeled DLS, uh, asking if they, you can again show the proposed design for 4th Street between um, Barline and Chandler. I think that's where we're proposing to keep that on-street parking um, and then adding in the bike lanes with the excess right-of-way there. Yes, let me go, let me bring back the slide, sorry. Right here. Or maybe this, this is, well, yeah, this is the proposed typical section between the Berlini Street and Chandler Drive. Yeah, if you can go back to that where they're, you're showing the colors on the road, I think that's helpful. Um, okay. And DLS says, thank you. So I think we're good. 
Yeah, this basically the existing is again the it's a four lane undivided two lane each way. What we are proposing is um, two lane one lane each way and uh, undivided with the parallel parking on both sides of the street with the bike lane dedicated bike lane between the parallel parking and the travel lane. Basically, and the light blue color means it's, it's going to be parallel parking. The light red means it's it's a, it's a dedicated bike lane. And that was the only question we had in the chat box so far. Okay. I have a question from uh, Council Member Kelly. Council Member Kelly Allen Gray, thank you. Uh, cars are not always parked on East 4th Street. Why are we creating parallel parking? Uh, um, again, the pictures is, is okay, uh, the addition at East, East 4th is MAB. This is typically only true for the between the, uh, the Berlin Street and Chandler. Uh, when we had a several site visit and we saw people parking their car, but ex uh, other than that, other segment, we are not proposing parallel parking, only the segment between uh, Berlin um, and, and Chandler, that's where we are proposing the parallel parking. Everywhere else, we are not proposing. Okay, so I, I have a question, Ishka. Um, so you, you've chosen bear, you've chosen Berlin to Chandler. Um, yes, and, and you've chosen, I, I guess you took, you were there on days for whatever reason that people are parked there for, um, 95% of the time people are not parked on East 4th street. Um, and actually this is between Judkins and Retta where you're showing this picture and people are definitely not parked there often. Um, and, and it concerns me that we're going to take this piece, which is the, the, the commercial piece and make it um, two lanes, put the bicycles right in the middle um, and then parallel parking um, on the outside. But if you go over um, the uh, railroad passing that where um, going to where it turns into East First Street, when you come down the bottom of that hill in front of that store, in front of all of those houses there between, um, and I'm drawing a blank on the street, but just as you come down the bottom of that hill, all the way to Beach Street, there is lots of parallel parking there. And my, and my concern, which is what I said uh, the other day, is we're putting the bicycles right next to the traffic where there is, um, where there's, you know, this is a commercial delivery route. So where we may not have had a lot of 18 wheelers coming uh using 4th street during this during this pandemic um with all of the businesses that are that are trying to service different customers it is getting a lot of traffic um and we have more traffic now than we have bicyclists and i understand the, the need to make sure that everyone has yeah. A, a safe route, but it concerns me that we're going to put the parallel parking next to the curb so that if someone opens the door and they're not paying attention, that actually could hit the bicyclist if it's the cyclist if it's coming through, then pushes them into the street if they're next to a car. And just think, I, I just, I want us to think this whole thing through. And I know that you're really far down the road. Um, but what you're using is data from two and three years ago that may not really be relevant. So just putting it out there for everyone who is on this call to consider. Yeah, you make a very good point. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Yes, we will. We will uh, take that as a consideration and then and, and we'll, 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 uh, um, I will talk to uh, the, my design team and see if they can propose a better design. Council yeah. member, thank you again for your comments. Um, we're, we're, we do uh, plan on getting a, 
a meeting set up with you uh, very soon on this matter, and we're not too far along. That's why we have the public meetings. But I'd like to ask Julia Ryan to get in here and talk about um, some of her experiences with these residential streets and the mix of the um, commercial use and the residential use. Yeah, thanks for, um, for that. Um, so what we, the, the real um, impetus for this is, is we want to make sure that where there's residential fronting the the roadway that they still have that ability to park there. I know that you know often what happens is if we take away that ability for those uh, fronting residents to be able to park there, uh, they will still park there anyways, and and it can create a, a blockage. But what we can do is look at um, you know like in in this instance where we do see cars parked on one side but not on the other, we can look at ways to uh, maybe separate the traffic a little bit further. Um, to provide that separation from from the the heavy trucks and the 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 more vulnerable road users and and Jeremy is correct we're we're still really early on in design so we can um, definitely this is the time to to make modifications where uh, where we see the the need to make those and we can definitely look at the areas in which we can um, we can do that. We have a question from Mr. Tomeo. He asks, um, is there a, uh, any changes from Beach Street to Oakland Boulevard? So that's uh, partially the uh, phase two and partially phase one, if you'd like to answer that. Iskall or bring it up on the screen again. Sure. Let me go back. And while you do that, we do have another comment from DLS that commercial traffic has increased more than 50%. Often 18 wheelers delivering to the food bank have a difficult time navigating the streets. Okay, let me answer the first one between the beach yes, station sir. and Oakland, Oakland Boulevard. Um, yes, the, on, between beach and Halton, yes, we are. There will be changes on in terms of the lane configuration. Uh, existing is again, it's a it's a uh, four lane, two lane each way. What we are proposing is to be two lane, uh, one lane each way with the with the dedicated bike lane with the four foot of buffer. However, the east of east of Halton, east of Halton Road, we, uh, there there won't be any changes of lane configuration of the roadway because uh, uh, east of Halton Road, the trail is going it's uh, off street and the bicycle is not going to be on the street. Did that answer uh, answer the question? Well, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, we can, sir. Yes, we can, sir. Okay, because right there is a congregation of traffic between Beach Street and Halton. That's where everybody is coming into uh, into uh, for, uh, Fourth Street or, or First Street. So if you're going to make it only one lane, it's going to be a problem right there. Did you see that? Can you get it? Let me let me let me let me. Jeremy, did you hear me? Did you hear that clear? Yeah, yeah. Um, um, and Mr. Tomeo, and Mr. Tomeo, if, when you're not when you're not if you speaking, if you could mute yourself, because we have an echo. We have an echo. Okay, right, right here, close to the. Okay, the hey, main so, traffic. So, yeah. Go the ahead. main traffic, sorry. The main traffic coming into um, First Street, east of the beach, is right there. The entrance because you have the three major intersections coming into going uh, going uh, east, and it's a lot of traffic right there. So you're going to reduce the one lane. It's going to uh, make a, 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 a lot of damage. So we need to keep that open to a four lanes for for traffic. And the other thing that, that I have in mind is they, um, they're building a lot of apartments right there on Sylvania and Belknap that they're going to use a lot of these streets. So there's uh, apartments, more traffic, but then you are going to take off, take off the lines for traffic and give it to the cyclist then that's going to be dangerous for the, for the for, and it's going to be bottlenecks everywhere 
Yeah, we understand. Yeah, we understand. What, 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 what we do, what what we do, do is we're we'll going to ask, we'll gonna ask our, our design consultant to look at the traffic data and, 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 and make any, any necessary changes that, that need uh, based, on the, based on the traffic data, sir. So, Ishka, I wanted, I wanted to say what Mr. Tamayo is saying, and I'm not sure if you all are aware of this, but we just, um, today, there was a site plan that went to Zoning Commission for uh, an apartment complex at the corner of I-35 and East 4th Street. So, he's absolutely right. Uh, where he's talking about at Fort Pennsylvania is a little further up. Uh, it's, a, it's a block off of this, but there's actually going to be a new complex that's sitting right on 4th Street. So I think we need to take that into account as well. No, you need to go um, a little further west on 4th. Right, yeah, right here, uh, yeah. right where you were. Uh, with the two, where you show where you showed the two cyclists yes it's just west of uh top golf on the exact same side next to encore okay yes ma'am we understand the concern yes we will we will make sure that we work with our consultant and then um, before we finalize our design we will work with you all and this is, and uh, I think, uh, I think we, that we, we have several, we still have several other community community meeting. project. And again, this, uh, my this other, is, uh, my this other is, concern this is, is, this is existing, 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 existing here is a three lane, three lane one lane, each one lane each way with the chair lane, chair lane in the middle, chair in the middle, that's existing, and we. And, and we are not making, we are not any, making changes. any changes. Okay, I have another, another concern is that we have spent millions of dollars on the trails right there by the gateway and all the way from uh, west forward to Dallas on the trails for bicycles. Why are we spending so much money if you are going to make the traffic for the bicycles on the streets? Got that one? Scott, would you like me to respond to that? Yes, please. It's hard to hear. Uh, it, it was breaking up on my part. Sure. So uh, he's referring to the Fort Worth to Dallas uh, trail that the Council of Governments is uh, looking to put in place, and we've been uh, a good partner with them. And the Council of Governments is the agency through which we receive funding for the on-street part of this project as well. The, um, this is an alternative route for the Fort Worth to Dallas Trail for people who are uh, walking or biking. So it's a more connected, uh, straight, straightforward route to get through East Fort Worth and to make sure that people um, in the Riverside neighborhood have access to the trails as well. Um, the trail that is in existence as part of these, this uh, regional project goes through Gateway Park and puts you a, a few miles out of the way of your destination. So that's that's why we're looking to make a more direct route to connect downtown to East Fort Worth and to the Riverside neighborhood. And while we're here, I was wondering if uh, Nolan Pierce is on the line, and I'd like if, if he is able to uh, explain to the group uh, traffic analysis and what it is that we look at before we make determinations on what a roadway configuration should be so what are what's the data nolan that we look at and what kind of time period do we do we review jeremy i think that jeff uh, will or whitaker is in, in the line too if if you may okay or jeff yeah, yeah. there you go and there are our consultant team yeah yeah we, we we looked at many factors we looked at historic data that was collected over the, over the years, and we also looked at 2050 uh, numbers that uh, Texas has run a model on here. So we were both looking at existing data and future data before we made design decisions. So using standard FHWA standards uh, to know what 
type of road was. Um, we were trying to create a safe and slower speeds. Um, as the show data showed, there was speeds that were up in the 50 miles an hour that were speeding. So we were trying to create a, a, a connection that pr provided slower speeds while maintaining the adequate capacity as the graphic that was shown. This road currently um, has quite a bit of extra capacity on it. So based on the volumes and projected volumes that we had, we felt comfortable enough uh, recommending that we could operate this roadway with one lane and still maintain an adequate level of service for, for the users that are currently using it and provide a safe and comfortable environment for the bicycles that use it. Thank so you, it's really, that was helpful. Yeah, it's really actual traffic data plus pr traffic projections um, based on TxDOT's um, model, taking into account future growth, and future development that might occur in this area. Thanks again. Um, I want to make sure that everybody who has a question has the opportunity to ask it. So if you have one, please uh, unmute yourself. Oh, here we go. Um, this is from uh, Frank Crum. Can you describe the current project at the old 4th Street Bridge? So, um, Iskal, would you like me to answer that one or would you like to? Yes, go ahead, please. I'm unaware of that project. Okay, so the old 4th Street Bridge, um, when, when, uh, Let's see. When I, I believe you're talking about the the first, yeah, the, the one over the Trinity River, Mr. Crum. So when First Street was reconstructed by TxDOT, the old bridge was um, taken uh, was preserved for the use of the Fort Worth to Dallas Trail. So it is currently being used for biking and walking. Um, it's under construction right now from the Park Department to make sure it's all all good to go, but um, that's a park department project that's unrelated, but we did include it in our project um, application for funding to show to the Council of Governments that this corridor is important for us and that we're doing all, everything we can to cut costs. And if you have uh, any more questions on the bridge project, I'm going to put my information in the chat box so you can email me directly and I can get you with the correct people at the park department for further details on that one. That's all the questions that we've gotten this evening, Iskal, so I'll leave it up to you. Unless uh, okay. Council Member Kelly Allen Gray, would you like to say anything to close? Oh, the Council Member's asking when we'll be back with updated information, Iskal. Uh, right now, we are in the process of reviewing the 60% design. We will take all the comments from today's uh, uh, community engagement meeting. Uh, we're going to um, um, sit down with uh, the consultant. Um, again, uh, as far as the schedule goes, um, I'm hoping to get that to comment back uh, to consultant um, sometime uh, next week. Um, I will have the second round um, of some metals, um, again, it's in two different phases, and two different phases are in two different packages. Is um, I can I can as soon as I have the update, updated information, I can reach out back to, back to back to you, Councilman. Council but um, we 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 are some uh, planning to submit that our comments, including to, uh, in, uh, from today's meetings, to consultant um, uh, sometime next week. Okay, I just, uh, I, what I want to make sure that we do is that um, we keep everyone updated of what's going on as we, as we move forward. Um, I don't think there's anybody here who is opposed. We just want it to do, we want to do something that makes sense. 
um, for everybody and, and still keep everyone safe. Um, so I, I want to say to you, Ishkal, and to Jeff and to Jeremy and everyone, um, all of our staff and, and our community members who are on the call, thank you so much. Also, Alicia Ortiz uh, was on here and she might still be on here from Council District 4. Um, so thank you all. And if I don't see you any uh, before the new year, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, everybody. Thank you, Councilwoman Gray. Happy holidays. All right. Thank you again. Uh, if you have any any questions, you can. This is my contact information. You can uh, you can contact me at any time regarding the project. Uh, I'll I'll try to respond as best as I can. Um, and um, I think uh, we can adjourn this meeting. Uh, again, happy holiday and 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 new year. Happy new year. Thanks everybody. <laughs>